Hey everyone, it's Emily here and it's time for Segway Magic Saturday and today we are doing the Snark Tag. I will leave the links below in the doobly-doo for the Snark Squad videos about this and here we go. Contrivance brings people together. Name a work that relied too heavily on contrivance for your taste. Grace, you're done. We're all over it. You're done. Taking the parenting out of parenting. Name your least favorite fictional parents. This actually was surprisingly difficult for me to do. Well, in pop culture and literature and all the things, there are tons of awful, awful parents. But for some reason, when I was looking through my books and my DVDs and all the TV shows and the like, I had a really hard time figuring out, okay, which are the parents that I really, truly hate, that are really, truly awful? Because you kind of just accept, like, oh, yeah, it's pop culture, it's young adult literature, you're a bad parent, moving on. And you kind of, and I just kind of don't really think about it that much, which maybe I should think about it. But some of the ones that stood out to me are... Book Wellington's father in the Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences. You don't actually meet him, but you definitely get Wellington Book's backstory, and his dad is a piece of work, and it haunts him throughout the entire series, and thanks to some of the plot twists at the end of the most current book, I feel like we're going to find out even how worse his father was. There's also Sibella's dad in Dark Triumph. This is the second book in the His Fair Assassins trilogy. And I'm not going to get into how awful her father was because spoilers, but holy cow, he's awful. And then also Hector from The Night Circus. He is Celia Bowen's dad and he's pretty terrible too. Like he abuses her and forces her to do this competition where he really only cares about the competition and not, you know, her life. Sandy Cohen, eyebrow scale of non-negligent parenting. Basically, your favorite fictional parents. And the first ones that came to my mind were the Matthews from Boy Meets World. Because who wouldn't want to be a part of the Matthews family? Their parents are freaking awesome. They take care of their kids. They raise them right, they show them morals, but they also kind of let them do their own thing. Like, they're not too, like, hovery. And then, you know, they also adopt Sean later because, you know, Sean was basically part of their family anyway. They love Topanga and all of their friends. And basically, let's just all join the Matthews family of Boy Meets World. Then a shout out for Lola's dads in Lola and the Boy Next Door by Stephanie Perkins. Her mom isn't that great, but her dads, when I read this book, they were one of my favorite things about the story. I loved her dads. I thought they were doing such a fantastic job. And they're kind of who I want to be like when I grow up. Detecting <laughs> it's out of things. So basically your favorite character who solves mysteries and texts. And while I don't really read or watch a whole lot of mysteries for the most part, um, there's a couple that I watch, but none that I'm like, yes, that's the best ever. So we're just going to say Sherlock, because I do love Sherlock Holmes and, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch. But I also want to give a shout out to Dr. Henry Morgan, because the TV show Forever is getting canceled. And I know it wasn't really the greatest show ever, but I liked it, and I'm sad to see it go. 14.30 on my SAT, your favorite smart character. Hermione, duh. I hate this fictional character so hard. Your least favorite character ever. First, let's just say we all hated Umbridge. Universal hate for Professor Umbridge. But then I also have to say I really, really hate Teabag from Prison Break. Like, he is on the screen and my skin crawls. I can't stand him. Like, I see him and I want to, like, puke because he's so disgusting and so awful and like they might have I can't remember I haven't watched the show in a while and they might have maybe given him some backstory but it didn't really make him sympathetic to me and he's just oh dazzling you with my brooding your favorite fictional character who just broods all the time and I just have to say Louis from Interview with the Vampire he basically defined the brooding vampire all brooding vampires after Interview with the Vampire 
probably were inspired by Louis and kind of Lestat too. Lestat, like, I don't think he would call himself brooding, and but he 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 is a little bit because he's a vampire who doesn't love a good brooding vampire. But yeah, this this story defined it. But then I do like Mari's answer with Jon Snow. I really I love Jon Snow. He's pretty fantastic. And how can you? I mean, he does the perfect brooding face. Beware actual trauma ahead. So something from your childhood that legitimately traumatized you. And I have to say, the movie The Fly, I never, I don't think I've actually seen the entire movie, but I just remember there was one time I was like sick or I had like a broken leg or something and I was sleeping in the living room and I was like waking up in the middle of the night and on the TV was the movie The Fly and I just remember, like, seeing the very end where, like, he turned into a fly and, like, the spider was, like, gonna eat him. And just, like, I was gonna, like, find, Google a picture to, like, show you this movie, this awful, terrible movie. But, like, when I Googled it, the photos were so disturbing. Like, I had to close out my browser immediately because it terrified me so much. Like, it was awful. And, like, I had nightmares of, like, this spider. And, uh, it's just, it's, it's terrible. It's really awful. Team feels. Fictional work that gives you all of the feels. Um, have you not met me? Everything gives me the feels. All the time. Forever. Always. I never not have feels. Hello. Which then, Team Heartless Cow. Something that was maybe supposed to give you the feels, but you just didn't feel really anything at all. And I kind of feel bad about this answer, but it's Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. So many people love this book, and I love Rainbow Rowell. I love all of her other books. I think they're great, they're cute, and they give me feels, and I get all like, oh, warm, happy, fuzzy feelings inside. But Eleanor and Park? Not so much, and I don't know why. So that is it for the snark tag. I can't wait to see all of your other videos. And I know I'm supposed to tag other people in it, but I really can't think of anyone at the moment. So if you want to do this tag, you are tagged. And don't forget to do hashtag segue magic so that we can all watch all your other videos. And I love your faces and I'll see you later.